But when we talk of the executive, the question arises of who actually is the executive in a parliamentary system of government. In a presidential system of government, that question is very easy to answer. It is the president. So in a presidential system of government, the president is the executive. In a parliamentary system of government, it is common for us to think that the prime minister is the executive. However, if we look at Section 61 of the Australian Constitution, it provides that the executive power of the Commonwealth is vested in the Queen and is exercisable by the Governor General as the Queen's representative and extends to the execution and maintenance of this Constitution and of the laws of the Commonwealth. In fact, nowhere does the Constitution mention or identify the Prime Minister, and neither does the Constitution clearly define who wields executive power. On the basis of this provision, does it mean then that it is actually the Governor General as the Queen's representative who wields executive power? The idea of the executive in Australia is actually more defined by convention and common law. For example, in Sue versus Hill, the High Court through Chief Justice Gleason said that the government being the executive is distinct from the legislative branch of government and is representative by the ministry and the administrative bureaucracy which attends to its business. The executive or the crown may also be defined as the collection of individuals and institutions, such as ministers, public servants, the cabinet, the executive council, a governor or governor general, and statutory agencies which exercise the executive functions of government. But this idea of the crown or the executive being a collection or a body of individuals and institutions exercising the executive powers of government raises a thorny issue. In the end, who then is responsible for government? Where does the box stop? Where does responsibility for government lie? If we will recall, Sue versus Hill had defined the executive as being represented by the ministry and the administrative bureaucracy which attends to its business. And the executive or the crown was also defined as a collection of individuals and institutions which exercise the executive functions of government. In relation to the executive council, Section 62 of the Australian Constitution provides that there shall be a Federal Executive Council to advise the Governor General in the Government of the Commonwealth, and the members of the Council shall be chosen and summoned by the Governor General. So in relation to the question of who is responsible for government, arguably you can lay that responsibility across a number of actors and institutions, including ministers, public servants, the cabinet, the executive council, a governor general, and statutory agencies. In reality, it is not unusual for government officials to deny responsibility for government, and then they end up passing the buck or the responsibility to others. And I think these next set of images you will get a sense of how difficult it can be to determine who is responsible for government. I'm a platypus. I'm a platypus. I'm a platypus. You're a what? Well, I'm a duck billed platypus. Oh, duck billed I'm a web footed platypus. Oh. <laughs> I'm a duck billed, web footed, funny looking, fast swimming, warm blooded, puddle jumping, bottom feeding, burrow digging platypus. Got it, you're a platypus. Well, I'm an egg laying platypus. I'm a flat tailed platypus. You 
are. <laughs> I'm an eggland, flat tailed, funny looking, fast swimming, warm blooded, duck billed, web footed, burrow digging, platypus. So you're a platypus. Got it. Okay. <laughs>